everyone, so for today's video I am back and I am doing another how to revise video. I kind of want to get a load of these up within the next few weeks as obviously people are starting to revise. So for today's video I'm going to be talking about how I revise for science and kind of like what I do to revise, notes and flashcards and all things like that really. And then how you can put that revision into practice. This video has been really requested as I did one about a year ago and then I wasn't happy with it and I changed the way I revised for science completely. So that's why I thought I'm going to do a proper one that seems to actually work for me. So yeah, I'm going to be doing that for you today. This video is also a collab with Perks of Law who is doing one for triple science. So if you stay, take triple science, hers might be a little bit better for you just because um, there's a lot more content in triple than compared to me and I do um, the combined higher, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, without further ado, I'm going to get into it. So for those of you wondering, I'm on the new spec, the 9 to 1 GCC. I'm on the example for AQA and like I said, I do combined higher. Okay, so I basically do revise for all three sciences in a very similar way. There's only kind of like one thing I do differently for each of them. So right now, all my science revision is in this massive ring binder. It is honestly huge. And in here I have all biology, chemistry and physics. So for biology, I'm going to talk through this first because biology has the most content. It is absolutely ridiculous how much there is for biology. So I'm going to talk you through how I revise for that first. So the first thing I will do is I will take my CGP um, revision guide. I much prefer this because to like the proper textbook only because this literally has everything you need to know and it's in a really really nice form like sometimes a textbook can be really wordy and it's not actually telling you what you need whereas this just lays it all out for you this book um i think it's 10 pound but it has all three sciences in it so you know saves you some money so it's got like the biology and then it goes all the way through to chemistry and physics so the first thing i will do for biology is i will go into this book and i will find the chapter and then, for example, so B1 is cell biology. So what I will do is I will make one big mind map for all of the cell biology. And I do this portrait and it's kind of like taking notes, but in a more visual way, if that makes sense. So it's really, really condensed notes. So then I'll just do this. Sometimes they're double-sided just because there is a lot of content. But yeah, this is basically notes in the most condensed form possible but that still look like a mind map. And then if there's anything like process, for example, mitosis, I would make like a flow diagram just because this is something so important. So I've got diagrams and then just the steps because I do need to know that. And then once I've done that, when you get the textbook up, it's in different topic so for example cell biology is known as b1 and b2 and then it goes all the way up to like 18 or something so then what i do is i make a smaller mind map just for that topic because like at school we get tested on the subtopics based on the caboodle textbook so i will go ahead and do that so for biology for me mind maps work really well because there is so much information so yeah i just like to do that and obviously i just put them in like so and then I do this for all my biology topics and yeah I do make some notes if that makes sense like I did notes for these topics because we were taught these such a long time ago whereas for the second paper all the content in that is what I've actually learned this year so I don't really need to go and make notes for that because I have them but yeah I just made some notes they're all like all my pieces of paper are in here so that's what I do for biology I just make it one big mind map for the topic and then I make smaller mind maps for the subtopics and I will do things like flow diagrams and pictures and then when I am happy with that I will then make flashcards so for example there's a lot of key words and terms you need for biology so I have things like for B1 like the nucleus the really basic stuff that I just have from ages ago and then yeah for each topic I will just make a few flashcards with just key words or like things that I always get wrong or like um, what is the word equation for uh, respiration, photosynthesis, things like that. So yeah, I'll just put those onto flashcards as then it's really quick and easy. I can just flick through and 
learn these. So obviously these aren't all of them because I haven't finished all my biology revision, but I, I would really recommend it for something like biology, is making flashcards with all those key terms, things like tissues and muscles and all those kind of things and things like stem cells and having examples and specialised cells, having examples and stuff. So yeah, I'd recommend that just condense anything really, really important onto a flashcard because this is like what you need. Okay, so moving on to chemistry, I do something very similar. So, of course, I make a kind of like a subtopic mind map that's exactly the same as biology. I will do that. But for like the big topics, like I was saying, the CGP topics, I will make a landscape and just into one massive mind map here. So this one's for like the atomic structure and periodic table. So yeah, I just make one huge mind map. And then as you can see, like this is like a subtopic mind map. So this is like everything and then this is the really really important stuff so i find this works better for chemistry because there is quite a lot although there are less topics there is quite a lot of information in each chapter so yeah things like this i have processes and the different key pieces of information and i will color code so you know instead of writing it all in one color i'll highlight and switch up and things like that i just like to make it really colourful and I find my maps work really really well for science because there is so much so you just want to condense it all down to what you really need and again I just go into the CGP book and work my way through. I kind of look at it, for example, if there's four pages in the book, that's four different sections on my mind map. So that's how you kind of have to think about it. Obviously, if there's like nine pages, you're probably gonna go either condense that right down or do two different mind maps. I do a lot, a lot, a lot of maths um, questions for chemistry. So for example, for C4, it's relative formula mass. So I did a load of practice questions on that just to make sure I was really to grips with that as those often come up as like four or five mark questions in the paper. We had one in our mock, so I do a lot of like practice with the formulas for chemistry and go and put them into practice. And then again, I will make some flashcards. So as you can see, I had a flashcard for each of like the processes and then I've got like all the um, word equations. Then there's physics. And physics, I do the exact same kind of mind maps for biology. So actually you would have seen me making these on my Instagram. I put a video up back in December. So I do the exact same kind of portrait thing and then just a summary mind map. See, there are 23 formulas you have to learn for physics. A lot of formulas as you can see for physics. So what I tend to do to learn these is I will obviously put them onto flashcards. I don't have the flashcards on me right now. I think they're in my drawer. So yeah, I put these all onto flashcards and then I keep testing myself. And I think one of the best ways to learn the equations is to put them into triangles and then also put into practice um, I find that really helpful so I'll take my workbook from CGP I highly recommend these and I'll have like questions in here and what I will do is then go and put those into practice if that makes sense now there are also a lot of required practicals to learn yeah, there's a lot of required practicals. So for me, I have only done them for chemistry so far, writing them out. So what I will do is I will literally just make notes on them and diagrams. So this is the one for making soluble salt. So I literally went and watched a video on it. And then as that video was going on, I made notes going along with it and then drew the diagrams that they used and I find that just works. I kind of like to just remember them. You can obviously go and put them onto a flashcard, um, but my map for kind of required practicals isn't going to work. For me, I just found it was really easy to make notes because then I could take these notes and if I had learned them, when that six marker comes up, I can literally kind of just reword this and it's there. My final tip for you is don't spend all your time writing out notes from the textbook because this is so time consuming and with science you don't have time. For me I have 18 biology topics, 13 physics and 12 chemistry so that is a lot of science topics and you just don't have time to be sitting there writing out notes. So what I've suggested you is make your notes as good as possible in class because then they're there and you can revise from them or scrap the whole notes thing and just go directly from that textbook. So I found when I was making notes, it was only because I didn't have any others, which is why I did it. But it just didn't help because I can't revise from just reading over and over again. You need to actually be doing something active and making it colourful and visual. As when you get in, you can kind of just start to visualise that mind map. You can imagine it 
on your desk or you can remember what you've been doing on your flashcard. So don't spend your time just copying out and writing loads of notes because it's been proven to be really ineffective and I remember I used to do that and it got me nowhere and then I started trying something new and it worked in a completely different way. I hope you've all found this video really helpful. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them below. I hope I've covered everything. Um, I did ask on Instagram and from that I've checked everything off. But yeah, if you have any other questions or things you want to know, just comment them down below. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it a thumbs up. And I just want to say a massive thank you for 24,000 subscribers. That's crazy. I cannot believe it. Go and check out Perks of Law's video as well if you do triple science or it may still help you out if she does something different. To me, she, it should be up today as well. So yeah, go check that out. Links will be below and I will see you all in next week's video. Bye.